you nothing, but the Holy Spirit speaks to you and tells you no. How, how does your psyche recover from a no from God? How, how does your pride deal with the Lord telling you no? Because if you don't put your emotions and your pride in check, when God tells you no, you will tell God, no, no, I, I don't care what you say, I'm going anyhow. And can you imagine the trouble that you'll get in when God tells you no, but you don't want to listen to God and you go on anyhow? Because if you be honest with us today, many of us got this same song that plays in our mind, and this is the way our song is played. If I knew then, yeah, y'all already know that song, don't you? Like I knew now, I wouldn't be in the shape I'm in. And that's the song of all of our lives because when we really look at the text today, I, the life of every Christian believer is a life that we wrote out one way, but God and the Holy Spirit changed the way we wrote out the song, the, the song of our life, and he moves us in another direction. Can you imagine the trouble, the trials, and the tribulation you will be in right now if God didn't close some doors. I, okay, I see how you're going to play me this morning. It's not because you've been so good. It's not because you didn't touch the stuff. It's not because you missed good and too sure. It's because God closed some doors. Okay, I see how you want to be. And so, and so don't laugh at the prostitute. Don't laugh at the drug addict. Don't laugh at the man under the bridge with a sign that say, we'll work for food. Because had it not been for the grace of God, it could be you standing right there. If God had closed some doors, I wish I had somebody this morning. If God had locked some doors, if God had barricaded some doors, some of us would be in the same situation. Somebody else said, you didn't go to prison not because you didn't do it, it's just because you didn't get caught. Talk back to me if you can. And so it's not our prerogative this morning to act as if we've done everything right. No, you've not done everything right. It's just God closed some doors. Have I got a witness right there? And had God not closed some doors, you would be in worse shape than you are today. And so we ought to thank God for the ministry of closed doors. Look at this thing this morning. Some of us today, we wanted wealth, house, fame, and fortune. Well, God gave us health, a home, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Ghost. Some of us today, we, we wanted a man that was tall, dark, and handsome. And God gave you something that was far less. But what you didn't know is God closed the door because the man that you want will be in the mirror more than you do. I wish I had somebody. And God never gives us a blessing that turns into a curse. Because some of the stuff you want for yourself, God has already peeked it out and says, no, that's not the one for you. And some of us are still crying because we want what we want, but you've got to stop crying and accept what the Lord has given you. I wish I had somebody right there. God has been too good to us for us to take our second choice rather than God's first choice. I wish I had somebody in this place this morning. When you serve a God like ours, when God gives us his first choice, that's better than any choice we can make. So as we enter into the circumference of this text, when we zoom in with our lenses and we focus a little bit further in what the Lord is showing us, it appears that this text is simply a lesson on geography. Just Bithynia, Troas, Macedonia, Mysia, Asia. It's just, it appears to be lessons about geography. But a good preacher, I'm just talking about me, a good preacher We'll look through all that geography and find some theology. But because, because some of us are here today, 
we've looked at the geography and we think that we're in the right place, but instead of looking at the geography, we ought to look at the theology. Because it's not where you at, because if you got a problem, no matter where you go, you're going to have a problem. I wish I had somebody. See how quiet you got right there? Because if you have the problem on the inside, whether you here, there, or anywhere else, you still going to have a problem. So it's not about the geography. It's about who you got on the inside that's going to determine that where you go, God can bless you there. Woo. Because if you are a child of God, you, you are somebody, whether you're standing on a corner with a wife, beat a t-shirt, and flip-flaps, if you're somebody, you still somebody. Because clothes don't make the person. The person make the clothes. And if you are who you say you are, God can bless you regardless of where you are and what you got on. So look at this. Spirit suffer them not to go into Bithynia. So they ended up in Troas. They ended up in Troas. So the crucial question this morning is, what are the theological truths that are lodged up in this text that God is trying to teach us today. What is God trying to teach you that whenever he tells you no, it's not fatal nor final, God is directing you by way of closed doors. I think, I think first and foremost, I, I think the Lord is trying to teach us that he has more than one way to get us to where he wants us to be. But you, you'll get it sometime tomorrow. You, God got more than one way to talk to us. And, 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 and you just head in the direction in which you prayed about, but don't pray and close the prayer there. Pray, leave the prayer open. That means you got to talk to God. But it also means God got to talk back to you. Because a good relationship is not one-sided. A good relationship means I can talk to you, but I give you room to talk back to me. So see, right now I'm talking to you, but I'm also looking for you to talk back to me while I'm with you. And what makes the conversation one-sided, a monotone is, most of the time we'll talk to God and we get up off our knees. Most of the time our prayers sound like this, God I want, God give me, God I need, God give me. And by the time we get through telling God what we want, we get up off our knees, we dust our knees off, and we head out to the way we think God wants us to go. But, 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 but how are you going to deal with this text? How, how are you going to deal with the Bible? Because that's all I know to preach. How are you going to deal with a God that tells you no? Come here, come here, I ain't finished. How are you going to deal with a God that tells you no about ministry? Because you thought just because you were in a position in the church that this is what the Lord wants me to be, so I'm going to pave a way. But sometimes God said, this is not for you, this is for somebody else to do. Lord have mercy. How do you handle a God that tells you no? How, how, how do you handle a God that tells you no about ministry? Wait a minute, God. You're the one that called me to this. And Paul is saying, I've even been here before, and I just want to go back and recap to find out how the churches are doing. And God says, no, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm messing up somebody's theology. Because somebody's theology says, God will never tell you no. That's a lie. God ain't scared of you. God is so good and so sovereign that he'll tell you no because he knows what's best. I wish I had somebody right there. And since you serve a God that's so sovereign that he knows what's best, I would implore you today to listen to what the Lord has to say. Because just because you want to do a thing, you can do a thing, don't mean you ought to do a thing. Just because you can cuss don't mean you have to. Talk back to me if you can. 
Just because you can get drunk don't mean you have to. See how quiet it's on that front row? <laughs> Just because you can sin don't mean you have to. Because when you got a charge to keep and a God to glorify, you, you don't have to do something because God will protect you and shield you and keep you safe in his own. And I wonder this morning that anybody in the church house can testify that there were times you wanted to do something. You wanted to cuss somebody out. You wanted to act a fool. But the God you serve said no. Look at this today. He's reminding us that there are times when he guides us by way of closed doors. The Bible says they were forbidden. That word forbidden in the Greek means hindered. They were not just told no, they were hindered. Watch this. That word hindered means if they wanted to, they couldn't. Or if they did, they could have, but it wasn't going to work out. And some of you are falling into trouble because God has says no, but you're still trying to do what you want to do, and it's not working. And you're asking God, why is it not working? And God is saying to you this morning, because I told you no. Probably should have found another sermon because you all ain't talking back to me this morning. Look at, look at, this, look at this text today. I mean, really, think about, think about it today. If God had not closed some doors. No, 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 no. I'm going to give you time. Think about it just for a minute. Think about where you would be right now if God had not closed some doors. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The reason I'm saying Lord, have mercy because I'm thinking about it. Lord, have mercy. Lord, I ought to hear some more Lord, have mercy too. Think about where you would be right now if the Lord hadn't simply closed some doors. Lord, have mercy. Think about the terrible trouble, the chaos, the calamity, the confusion that you would be in right now if God had not closed some doors. Yeah, you, you shout about your education, but where would you be if God had not closed some doors and you decided to go in the direction that the Lord sent you, where would you be now without that that the Lord has blessed you with? Because just because you tried to pull on the door and it didn't open, that's the only reason you can shout this morning. And went back to the door and tried to open it, but it still wouldn't open. And some of us went back to the door and tried to open it. But it still wouldn't open. And then you decided to go in another direction. And that's when you start to flourish and grow. Because as long as you tried to do what you tried to do, God closed the door and sent you in another direction. So, what do you do when the doors are closed? Number one, first thing you could do, expect some detours. I'm getting happy all about this by myself. That, that, that don't make you shout. But, but listen, you can expect de detours don't mean stop. Detours mean he's sending me in another direction. Okay, may, maybe that didn't get you. Let me, let me tell you about, may, may, maybe this will get you. I was, I was in um, New Orleans, Louisiana some years back. I went to the national championship down there. Um, uh, the University of Alabama were playing roll tide. I ain't, I ain't roll tide. And so they were playing. And so, and so watch this. So I go down there. And so before the game, I was able to get in easily. But, but, but on the way out of the game, watch this, watch this. They had shut off certain roads to get everybody back to the interstate. Lord, help us. Okay. And so I'm coming back. And so the man, this big state trooper from New Orleans is standing in the road. And so he keeps saying, go this way. Sit there. And, I, and, I, and I drove up to him and I'm saying, hey, sir, I don't know which way I'm going. I don't, I don't, I don't know how to get here. Guess what the state trooper told me? Keep moving. <laughs> and I was trying to explain to him that I don't know where I'm going. And they had signs up that says detour, detour, detour. And I tried to tell the state trooper, but, but I see the signs, but I don't know where I'm going. And guess what he told me? He told me the same thing God told me to tell you. 
Just keep moving, Lord. And some of us today, whenever you are presented with a detour, you've got to learn how to keep on moving. You can't stop. you got to keep moving. Life is not a parking lot. Life is a thoroughfare. If you snooze, you lose. And so you got to learn how to keep moving. Just because life shows you a detour don't mean you're supposed to stop. If you just keep on moving, you'll get out of the trouble that you're in. Life will always give you detours, but life will always show you how to get out of it. Back then, I didn't have a good car. <laughs> so, so all I had to do was was, was find my way out, and a good friend, frat brother of mine, said, hey, hey, team, I'll tell you what we'll do. He said, he grabbed his phone, he said, we can find our way out of here with God's positioning system. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Whenever you have a detour, and you don't know which way to go, and when you speak to humanity, and humanity says keep moving, then just trust God's positioning system. What is, what is GPS? What is God's positioning system? God's positioning system means he know where you at. You don't know when to shout. You serve a God that no matter where you are, God knows where you at. And if God know where you at, God can get you out of the stuff you in. You serve a God that knows exactly where you at. So guess, guess what he said? He said, T -t take a right. I took a right. He said, T take another right. I took another right. He said, now take another right. And by the time we took another right, th there, was a, there was a sign that says Interstate 10. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. And I told him, I said, dog, let me tell you something. That'll preach right. I'm going to use this tonight the way we do it. I didn't know when I was going to use it, but guess what? God has a way that in spite of the fact that you find yourself in a place of detour, if the doors are closed and you can't go the way you want it to go, just trust God and he'll get you back on the right street. Watch this, watch this, watch this detour. I'm in verse number six. And when they had gone throughout Phagaria and into the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. The Lord says, no. Paul perhaps, and Paul perhaps, um, I know we're so biblically literate, not ill, but biblically literate, we say, that ain't what happened, but let me just throw something here. Paul perhaps saw a big Louisiana state trooper and says, I don't know which way to go. <laughs> that big state trooper told me what God told me to tell you this morning, bro, Paul, just keep moving. <laughs> it's right there, the Paul, just keep moving. And, and, and look, look at verse number seven. And after he went Come to Mysia, they'll say to him to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit suffered him not. But watch what Paul is doing, church. He does not stop because God says no. He learns how to keep moving in life because if God closed one door, he go, y'all read my notes. Don't read my notes. I, let, let me preach this. <laughs> if he closed one door, He'll open another. How will you know if another door is open if you stop at the first door? I wish I had somebody right there. And so Paul just keep on moving. And that's a word for some of us today. God says no. Some folks saw God said no. Some folks saw the door close. And now you man, you don't stop trying to move because folks know that you didn't make it. No things didn't work out. They know God said no. But don't stop because folk laughing at you. Keep moving. And let me tell you what you got to do. You got to don't stop. Get it, get it. You got to keep moving. In spite of the fact they know about your circumstance, you just know if God closed one door, you ain't saying it like I want you to say it. If God closed one door, and Paul is met by a detour. He's met by a detour, watch this, but he keeps moving. He goes to the next spot. But watch this, watch this, because sometimes it don't take some of us one time and we'll quit. But God is the orchestrator of this no. He's proctoring the test. He's watching Paul. How are you going to respond if I say no? Paul just went to another spot. And God said, okay, okay, okay. So when he gets to the next spot, Mr. Henderson, guess what happens? 
The Lord says no a second time. Ooh. I, I, I want to ask you something. How do you handle a the, your theology when God says no? Because I can tell about some of you all. Some of you have been pampered so much as a child and given so much as an adult that you can't take somebody telling you no and you start crying and, say, I ain't, I ain't gonna, and, and shut up crying and just keep moving because God will make a way out of no way. Stop complaining and stop crying and just trust in the Lord. Some of, some of us must have been only children because y'all don't know how to share nothing. If you can't have it, I ain't going to work with nobody else on it. If I can't be over it, I ain't even want to be in it. And then the Lord says, no. And then you go sit down. And the Lord was just trying to see if you can work with somebody when you're not, the, when you're not over it. God just want to see, can you share your toy with somebody knowing you're going to get it back when they play with it for a little while? God just want to see, can we play together as children of God? Can we work together? Can we create together? Can we move together? Can we be a church together? I just want to see, what will you do if I tell you no? Lord, tell them a second time, no. So, so, so watch this. Not only does God give us detours, but then, watch this, when God tells him no, there come a dream. Mm -mm. You all see it in the text. I'm right there. It's in verse number nine. Look at, look at verse number nine real quickly so that you can get this. Verse number nine says, watch this, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night. Because he just ends up in a small place called Troas. And he ends up in Troas, watch this, because the big places of the world where he tried to go was a place of, watch this, distractions. And God didn't send him to the places that he wanted to go back to. God got him in a place that if I talk to you in a dream, will you hear me? Because there's some places God can't put you because the big lights and the music and the and, 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 and Bebe and Junebug, and, and they, they become distractions to you. Sometimes a place with your honey, your bae, your boo, ain't what the Lord wants you at because when you own God's business, then all those other places become distractions. And so sometimes God will send you to a small place called Troas. And some of you are frustrated that God got you in this small place, but sometimes that's the only place I can talk to you. You are frustrated. I'm supposed to be over here. I'm supposed to be doing big things, but yeah, over there, I can't get your attention. So they come to this small, minuscule village called Troas. And it's in Troas, Paul gets a dream. He has a vision. It's right there in verse number nine. He, he, he gets to a place that's quiet enough so that God can talk to him. Yes, My brothers and sisters, let me hear him close this little sermon out. Let me ask you a question. Why, why, why can't God get your attention when you're on top of the mountain? Why does God have to get you in the valley before you can hear his voice? Why you got to be in the belly of the well? Why you got to be in the fiery furnace? Why God got to do all of this just to get your attention? Yes, <laughs> so he, he has a dream. Watch this. In Paul's dream, there stood a man from Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. Well. Watch this. All those big city lights got folks that are already helping them. But there's a man in Macedonia needs some help. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And sometimes we're guilty of trying to help who everybody else is helping that sometimes we miss helping the folks that really need it. Yes, sir, people. Look out, now. <laughs> but the Lord spoke to Paul and said, no. 
The Lord spoke to Paul again, no. And then the Lord sends Paul to Troas. And when Paul gets to Troas, the Lord sends a dream to Paul. <laughs> Say, Paul, there's a man in Macedonia mm -hmm. that sure enough needs your help. Paul is dreaming. And then the Lord said, Paul, this man is asking me. God said, this man is asking, say, Lord, if there's ever been a time we needed you, we sure enough need you now. Yes, sir. And, and church, whenever you, God hears his children's voice, God will send his very best to help you. Yes, sir. You still didn't get that? Whenever you ask the Lord for help, the Lord will send the Holy Ghost, will send Jesus Christ to rescue you, to deliver you. God is a deliverer, and when God delivers you, the redeemed of the Lord ought to say so. Look out, look out, man. Look out, man. So he has this dream. Paul dreams, says there's a man over Macedonia, said, come over here and help us. This dream erects something in Paul. Paul is getting ready to go down to Macedonia. Watch this. And, and the, only reason, the only, only reason Paul goes to Macedonia is because the Lord closed some other doors. That's it. That's it. And when God closed the first door and the second door, watch this, he never gave up. <laughs> he just kept moving. And the Lord led him down to Troas. Lord, watch this. Lord, watch this. Verse number eight says, watch this. And they passing by Mysia came down to Troas. It's right there in verse number eight. Came down to Troas. Paul want to go up. Because it's up is where we all want to be. But the Lord said, if I can use you to just do as I ask you to do. Because sometimes we think while we're sitting in the church, we're not supposed to bump elbow with folks that smell like marijuana. Yeah. We're not supposed to invite folks in the church that smell like alcohol. But the text says in verse number 8, God, watch this here. He passes through Miser. God sent him down, and they came down to Troas. In other words, this is another biblical example of, of, of the church getting down to the level where you can really do ministry. My Lord. My Lord. My Lord. Because you can't do ministry in West Tuscaloosa sitting up downtown in the big pretty church talking about I'm praying for you. The only way we're going to bring our cousins, our brothers, our sisters back to the church is we've got to go down there and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Lord. Keep that key, Doc. I'm finna ride out here in a minute. <laughs> There's dreams that he has. There's detours. But then I see something else. There's destiny. Watch this. Paul will reach his destiny because he did not allow detours to stop him. Mm -hmm. And because he kept going, God gave him a dream, but he does not get to dream until he gets to the place where the Lord wants him to be. That's right. Because God never gives the vision or dream when you're out of position. God never gives the dream when you're out of place. God gives, God says, Abraham, get you to the place that I will show you of. When Abraham gets to Mount Moriah, there's a ram caught in the thicket. But he never see the ram on Mount Sinai. He had to get to the place where the Lord told him to be because that's what the ram is. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on my way out of here. But there's, there's his, there's destiny. And if there's one thing the church ought to be trying to reach, it's the full capacity and propensity of this church destiny. Yes, sir. This church is destined yeah. for greatness. Yeah. This church is headed for greatness. But sometimes before you can head to greatness, you got to go down to Troas. Because there's somebody in Macedonia asking you to come over here 
and help us. C -c Come down here and help us. And Paul says, if I'm going to reach my destiny, I've got to leave here and go down to Macedonia. I've got to go help somebody come up to the mountaintops, but they can't get there until I show up. Yeah. Watch this. I'm, I'm almost finished. Watch this. So in verse number 10, it says, and after he, Paul, had seen the vision. Watch that pronoun. He seen the vision. He said, immediately, we endeavor to go into Macedonia. Uh -huh. don't, don't miss this. Everybody ain't got to see the vision. Paul saw the vision. And we immediately endeavor to go with Paul because we believe that the Lord spoke to Paul. Lord, I wish I had. You, you'll get it. You watch, watch this. Watch this. And we endeavor to go into Macedonia assured together that the Lord had called us. Watch this. He, Paul, got a vision. We immediately went with Paul because the Lord had called us to preach. Yeah. Watch this, he said. And when they got there, he says, and, 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 and for the preach the gospel unto them. In other words, we've got to be able to see the vision. Come on, Mr. Huggins, I'm ready. We've got to be able to hear what thus says the Lord. And we've got to be able to know that God is speaking in our hours of no closed doors. We've got to believe that the Lord is speaking in our closed doors. Because when the Lord closed some doors, yeah. that don't mean that everything is over. Yeah. That just means the Lord is sending us in another direction. Ain't the Lord all right? Yeah. I'm so glad this evening that we serve a God that's able to send us in another yeah. direction. Ain't the Lord all right? I'm so glad this evening that we serve a God that when he closed one door, he'll open up another door. Ain't the Lord all right? And I'm so glad this evening uh, that the God we serve closed some doors in my life. Have I got a witness there? Because if the Lord had not closed some doors, uh, it's a matter of where we would be today, we don't even know. Because when the Lord closed some doors, He'll open up a way that we can see the Lord high and lifted up. Ain't the Lord all right? Because when the Lord told Paul that the doors were closed, Paul had a dream. And while this man is praying to God, God is talking to Paul. And the man said, Lord, we need some help down here in Macedonia. And the Lord is speaking to Paul saying, Paul, I need you to go down to Macedonia so that you can help this young man find his way to Christ. And when Paul gets to Macedonia, he finds this young boy down there praying. And Paul tells him, everything you pray for has now shown up. And all I'm trying to tell you, First African, is when we pray to the Lord, the Lord will send us everything that we need. Ain't the Lord all right? Uh, won't He send help uh, in a time of trouble? Uh, won't He send joy uh, when your soul is filled with grief? Uh, won't He send uplift to sin when your soul is feeling down? Uh, ain't the Lord all right? Uh, Ain't he all right? You ought to say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yes. And when the world needed a savior, the Lord didn't send his very worst. When the Lord needed a savior, the Lord sent his son Jesus through 42 generations. And when Jesus came, they hung him high. They stretched him wide. He hung his head, and for me he died. Ain't the Lord all right? But that's not how the story ends. Three days later, he rose again. With all power, Holy Ghost power. With all power, all power in the palm of his hands. I'm finished.
Just imagine the tragedy. Just imagine the tragedy. Just, just a few minutes, musicians. Just imagine the tragedy. Just a few minutes. Just imagine the tragedy that you would be in today. If the Lord had just closed some doors. If the Lord had to let you continue down that path you were on. I'm not talking to the 50-year-old the, the, the you or the 40-year-old you or the 30-year-old you. I'm talking to that 20-year-old you that knew everything. And because you knew everything, you would be in a whole lot worse situation. The only reason that you ain't where you should be is because the Lord just closed some doors. Can I be honest with you? I'm finished. It's, you're not alcoholic, not because you didn't drink it. It's just because the Lord closed some doors. Listen to me real good now. Because some of us think, no, I just didn't like it. No, you liked it. And the Lord saw the road you were going down. And the Lord closed some doors. It's not because you didn't try drugs. You try like everybody. The person that's on drugs now, that's struggling, you tried it just like they tried it. But the only reason you're not addicted because the Lord closed the door. Look out. And, and you know marriages that are tore up right now. And the reason marriage is tore up is because someone stepped outside. But the only reason your marriage made it because the Lord gave you diabetes. The Lord gave you heart attacks. The Lord gave you some stuff to make you sit down. And by sitting you down, he closed the door. Some of you, you say, I, I ain't no alcoholic. I know because you can't drink with the medicine you take. He just closed the door. Some of you, the only reason you, can, you ain't in trouble right now, because you can't afford to get in trouble. God closed some doors. You ain't got no money. That's how the Lord closed some doors. The Lord just closed some doors. And I've got to hurry and leave this little sermon alone. Doors of the church open. If you're here today, and the Lord is leading you to come be a part of this great church, this great organization, the doors of the church are open. Why don't you come while the blood is still running warm in your veins? There might be someone here today. You want to thank, uh, Lord, I thank you for closing some doors. And while we're here, let me just see. Let me see. Let me see some hands that are not too embarrassed, not too ashamed, that want to thank God for closing some doors. I know that's right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, have mercy. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Listen, will there be one? Make up your mind.